Let's get started. Okay, awesome. So for the paint event today, I want to make sure everyone has everything they need. So we're going to be using um, blue and white and brown are the colors that that you will need for sure. Um, the other colors are just there for accents, um, but I've got pink, green, yellow, and black. Um, we also have our canvas and chalk or pencil and um, a sponge, a little basin of water. I really like these mushroom containers. I think they're fantastic for um, holding your paintbrushes and they don't spill very easily. And I've got my paintbrushes and my paint palette. So that's everything that we will need for our event today. Um, I'm going to um, run through the process step by step, exactly like we've been doing over the past uh, month or so. And um, I want uh, you guys to embrace in the amazing um, information from Kindle as well. So if you have any questions for her or myself, or you guys want to say hello, um, by all means, pop them in the comments. Um, and then we will get started. So I wanted to, uh, again, thank Kindle from Wild Birds Unlimited Canada. And I'm Allie from Pop-Up Painters in Ottawa. And we're very excited that you guys are hopping on this morning uh, to see us. Hi, Noreen. Thanks for hopping Thank on. Um, okay, fantastic. So um, I think we will get started. Kindle, how's everything on your end? It's great. We are trying to get the last bit of white paint out of our... Uh, out of our very well loved paint, uh, white paint bottle. So we are good. Let's, uh, let's see what we can create here. Perfect. Okay. So, um, for our very first step, I'm just going to make sure that everybody can see us. Okay. Fantastic. So, um, so for those that are having trouble logging on, if you want to, or sorry, for those that are logged on, if you want to share with your friends, if they're having trouble, they do have to make sure that they click on view uh, post or um, that they click on, you know, start post. Uh, so this video is running through Facebook Live, but we actually have it out of a different server. <clears throat> so it's a bit different than our normal events um, because we do have two of us hosting. So uh, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that you can hop on. Um, we will have this video available on our feeds later on, though. So um, you can always watch it later if you find that the painting is going a little bit um, quickly or you've you know, uh, missed a step, by all means, um, do what you can. Don't rush, don't get frustrated, and you can always watch it later. So we will start our painting. And again, uh, oh, hi, Gabriel. Hi, Avery. When you guys have any questions for Kindle, by all means, um, ask them in the comments. So we have our canvas. If you don't have canvas and you are using uh, paper, that's totally fine. Just make sure you put some tape on the backs and, and hold it down just because the uh, water and the acrylic paint tend to um, cause the paper ends to curl. So you want to make sure that that doesn't happen while you're painting today. So if you have a canvas or paper, that's totally fine. I'm doing my canvas landscape. So that means that it goes horizontally. If you want to do it portrait and have it taller, you absolutely can. This is your painting and you can do it however you want. So I'm going to paint mine landscape. And for our very first step, we're gonna create a really pretty light blue sky. So using your sponge, you're going to dip your sponge into the water and squeeze out all of the excess water. So when you squeeze your sponge, there's nothing dripping from it, but it just has a little bit of that damp feel to it. Okay, uh, Crystal says, web are waiting, but don't have the video. Crystal, um, just make sure you click on the video itself um, on our Facebook page and it should pop up. <clears throat> okay, so perfect. Uh, so for our background, we are going to use our blue mixed with a bit of white because we want to create that really light blue that you can see up here in the colors. And what we are going to do is apply that directly to the canvas. Now, our nest is going to sit sort of in and around here. So you want to make sure that's a bit lighter. So it's going to go darker on the edges and lighter in the middle. And how we're going to make that look is 
putting the blue and the white down and bringing the white from the inside all the way out. So we're gonna start with our white and you're just going to blend in that paint going up and down so it's a bit darker. And then I'm gonna turn my sponge to the other side, to the cleaner side, and I'm gonna do the same over here. So I'm just blending in so it's lighter and it goes all the way to the edge. So we do wanna have sort of that white streak coming down, that lighter streak in the center. And that's it. So while you guys are doing that, Kendall, I don't know if you have anything exciting happening at the Wild Bird Center. I, yes, I am going to, uh, so I have started looking up all sorts of really cool facts. So um, when I looked at this painting, I immediately thought that this looks like a robin's nest to me. Um, and a lot of us may be noticing Really busy. We might be seeing the outside collecting leaves. And you know what I did? We went and collected a whole bunch of stuff that well, this is what we're seeing robins collecting and, and lots of birds collecting right now. So what they're doing is they're out there collecting their nesting material so they can build a nice little home to raise their their to lay their eggs and raise their little fledglings in. Um, and something that's really fun for all of us to do while we're all home right now is you can go around your yard and collect. As you can see, we cut some grasses out of the garden and we collected some small little twigs. And you, and you can grab some moss if you have moss on your property and make piles. And what you might notice is the birds will come and collect from those piles and you'll actually be helping them. So when birds are building their nests, the, the most important thing for them is knowing that they're building a nest that's going to be safe and, and secure. So um, by having more nesting products for them, they're, um, they're going to be able to get right, right down to their, their main job is building that nest. That's awesome. Oh, that's very exciting. Sure. Perfect. That's great. Um, hi, Crystal. Hi, Isabella. Hi, uh, Ariana. Um, so, uh, Karen, you were wondering what happens if we don't have a sponge. Totally fine. You can use your paintbrush for applying your background. You just want to make sure that your paint is nice and smooth. So if you don't have a sponge and you want to just blend on that blue and that white in the background with a paintbrush, that's absolutely fine. Um, for those that are saying that it keeps freezing, um, I'm not sure internet uh, around your location. Um, I know that um, it, it's going to depend on um, the speed and things like that. So hopefully, uh, if it if it freezes a little bit and catches back on, if that is interruptive, um, by all means, feel free to catch the video uh, later as well um, once it's uploaded. Um, so how is everyone doing on the backgrounds? I'm so excited to see these paintings when it's finished. And uh, yeah, yeah. you do want to make sure that um, when you are doing your um, <clears throat> background that your paint is really smooth. So we do want it to dry quickly so that we can start with applying the main um, picture. Acrylic paint is great because it dries really quick, but it doesn't fully cure to your canvas. So even though my painting is dry, it is going to take a few days to fully cure. So you do want to make sure that um, you're gentle with it. You don't want to be rubbing anything off or um, smudging it too, too much because you can still um, interrupt that background. So um, I think what we're going to do is we are going to start to chalk on our image. So we have our nest <clears throat> and we have our branch. So when you're doing your branch, um, you're going to start at one side and you want to carry it all the way from edge to edge. So everyone, uh, make sure you have a piece of chalk. If not, a pencil is totally fine. And what we're going to do is we are going to start by doing a very long letter Y. So how that's going to look is... I am going to do, I'm doing this upside down, so I have to make sure that I've got, okay. So I'm gonna start with one of my branches here and the other down here. So I've got two lines 
see if you guys can see that, for my branches. And I'm gonna connect those into a letter Y, and I'm gonna have my Y dip down just a little bit so it holds that nest, like that. Might change my lines a little bit. I don't know if that's too sunny for you guys. Okay, perfect. All right, so we've got our letter Y, which is on a side. Perfect. Oh, happy birthday, Lauren. Thanks for coming to paint with us. Happy birthday, Lauren. Wow. Very cool. I can't wait to see your painting. If you guys have any questions for uh, the Wild Birds Unlimited, by all means, put them in the comments. Kindle would yeah. be very happy to answer them. And if, uh, if I don't get your question answered during our uh, time today, I will certainly respond to your question on Facebook as well. Perfect. All right. So then what we're going to do is we need to add our branch that's going to hug our nest. So coming up uh, almost halfway, you're going to curve your branch into the air and it's going to stop. And then it has one other little twig coming off of it. And then our nest is going to sit here. Now, we don't have to pre-draw our nest, but if you want to, honestly, it's just a little oval and it's going to sit, make sure it touches your branch and it's just gonna sit onto your branch like that. So we've pre-drawn the nest and the branches and we are ready to start our painting. So for this particular painting, we need to have our brown on our palette. Um, I don't know. Okay. So if I think you don't have brown, you can definitely use black for sure. It'll give it a more dramatic look, but it absolutely is gonna work. Uh, if you wanna mix brown, you could um, make brown with some yellow, green, um, and a little bit of blue and black. And then that should give you a little bit of a brown color. And then what else, the other color that we're gonna need is either yellow or white. So we can put some yellow. You have both, that's fantastic. So we'll put our yellow and our white. Perfect. And then depending what kind of tree you want, if you want to do the cherry blossoms, if you wanna just do um, some plain leaves, um, or you wanna do a different tree, maybe you wanna to decide to have blue flowers or purple flowers. Pussy willows. There's lots yes. of pussy willows in the trees Absolutely. right now. Absolutely, such a good idea. So you can create however you want and put your flower colors, if you so choose, directly on there. Um, Susanna, yes, this is going to be online afterwards. We've just started though, and we just did our background and our drawing. Uh, um, so we haven't really gotten too, too much into it, but yes, we will, uh, this will be shared on Wild Birds Unlimited as well as the Pop-Up Painters Facebook page. So for our first step in creating our nest, we are going to, uh, paint on our background, um, uh, sorry, our, our base for our uh, branch. And so what we're going to do is starting with your paintbrush, anytime you load your paintbrush with water, you want to lay it flat and pull it draw, uh, directly towards you to reshape those bristles. So I want to um, stress that because a lot of people make the mistake of drying their brush like this, and then it separates your bristles and it becomes very hard to paint and create with. So I want you to keep that in mind that to take the best care of your brush, it's best to just lay it flat and get all the water out that way as opposed to squishing it up. Um, we're gonna dip a little bit of brown into our paintbrush and starting at the very edges, you are going to go over your branch. So first you map it out by doing a nice consistent line. And don't worry if you run out of paint because you can always add paint on later, but we want it to be smooth. It's just a line right here. Your stick, 
Oh, Kindle, Kim uh, saw a white crown pigeon. I just saw your comment, Kim, a white crown pigeon. I, I have to be honest, I had to Google it as soon as I saw that to say, what is the difference between a, a white crown pigeon and, and any other pigeon? So I'll, I'll show a little photo here on my, um, on my phone because um, a very striking bird. And Kim, I'd love to hear more about... Uh, about how you uh, where and when, how you saw this beautiful bird because I have I have never seen this before. It actually looks like a tropical bird, um, but uh, what a what a beautiful what a beautiful bird to to see. Thanks for sharing that. While you're working on your branches, I also want to talk about um, one of the smallest, cutest birds that we have that visits us here in Ontario. Uh, I'm sure many of you are already thinking, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know what she's going to say. And I'm talking about the hummingbirds who are all migrating back into Ontario right now. Um, of course, this cold weather has sort of um, put them on pause. As they migrate up from, from South America, they, um, they'll sort of wait until, you know, the, the winds help, help them on their, on their long journey. Um, but it's around early May that we start to see them here. So if you have hummingbird feeders, that's a great time to get them out. But I wanted to show you this photo I found yesterday of how tiny a hummingbird nest really is. So if you think about the size of a large thimble, which would fit on your thumb, an adult's thumb, that's about how big a hummingbird's nest is. And if you look at this photo, it will really help to put it, put it into perspective. That is, that is a person handling the nickel beside a hummingbird's nest with two eggs in it. Hummingbirds will lay one to two eggs. And those eggs are about the size of a blueberry. Just to put into perspective how tiny and how incredible those are. And that, that hummingbird will build the nest out of spider webs and thistles and dandelion fluff and she'll form it she'll stomp it down with her little feet and she'll use her chest and her neck to smooth out the inside and then she decorates it we like to think she decorates it but I think she's really camouflaging it with little bits of moss and lichen and it's just a beautiful little masterpiece so um, as those babies fledge their teeny tiny little nests they too will start to come to our hummingbird feeders so a beautiful a beautiful visitor that we can begin to see very soon here in ottawa that's awesome now kindle if where could people find hummingbird feeders i know um you guys were in the process of setting up your online shop yes so um we unfortunately our store has uh, our store build has been placed on hold but we are in the process of opening up our online shop um i'm hoping to have some very exciting news um maybe tomorrow if not next week to um give you all an idea of when we're going to be able to um uh offer products so keep following along on our facebook page and our website we'll be making some big announcements soon i see a question here from lynn why do hummingbirds turn in a crazy eight? I um, I think maybe you're you're referring to their their very rapid flying movements. Um, hummingbirds are one of the now I'm not sure if they're the only or if they're one of the few birds that can actually fly backwards. Um, so I think that sort of that that flying pattern that you might be referring to is um, is is just their their behavior um, when they're you know, kind of coming in and out and trying to determine if, if it's a safe time to maybe visit your feeder. Um, I'll look into that a little more and, and um, their wings, their wing pattern. Well, Lynn, I'm going to look into that one a little bit more and, uh, and I'm going to get back to you about that. Let's see if I can dig up a little bit more info. Um, Great so question. For our um, our nest, so we'll we'll start doing our nest shape. So we do the nest as you can see in the picture. It's quite layered in terms of painting effects. So we've got a lot of shadows and a lot of highlights to give it that dimensional look. So the first layer that we need to put on the nest is um, 
are brown. And if you have a little teeny tiny bit of black, and by tiny, I mean a sesame seed amount. So I'm going to dip my paintbrush into brown first, and I'm just going to put a drop of black on the corner. And that's just going to give it that depth of color. And we're going to paint in a solid, almost like a solid uh, oval, so that that nest has a little bit of contrast trust next to the um, next to the branch. So you're painting in a solid oval. Keep in mind your brush strokes though for this particular um, part of the painting. You want to make sure that they're circular. So I'm not going up and down. I am keeping with the shape of the nest, which is just around and around and around. So that'll help to create that sort of um, image that it's got those twigs and hairs and spider webs and branches in it, right? We wanna make sure it looks like it's sort of that, that shape. So we're just gonna take our nest uh, oval and just go around and around to form that shape. And then we'll start to add our, our highlights and our shadows to it. Perfect. And it's okay if your painting, um, your nest painting isn't fully um, solid. So we've made sure to bring our brown on our branches very thick so that it doesn't look like it's see-through at all. But your nest can be a different story because um, you do want it to look like it's natural. So it doesn't have to be completely solid. If you have some areas that are thinner and some that are thicker in paint, that's okay. Um, that's kind of the look we're going for, sort of that messy, uh, messy kind of look here. There we go. So I'm wondering if any of our viewers have um, any nests around their properties right now. Um, I was saying at the beginning of the um, of the paint uh, event today that we actually discovered that we have a house finch um, who has met uh, put a little tiny nest on my Easter wreath. So this Easter wreath was on my front door. Uh, we moved it over a couple of feet to to on the brick of our house so we wouldn't keep opening and closing um, the door on her and disrupting her but she does have five eggs on this little easter wreath on my uh, the front of our house so we're pretty excited to watch it um, and we also have a, a duck in our uh, backyard who has um well in our our neighbors part right behind us but she's laid five eggs so that mama duck is sitting there so it's it's pretty awesome around here we've been watching these eggs and uh and watching a lot of activity going on the activity yeah mm -hmm. We, um, we put up a lot of nesting boxes on our properties because not every bird actually builds a nest. A lot of birds um, use nesting boxes. Um, so woodpeckers, for instance, they, they build a cavity in the tree and then uh, other birds will come along and use that, such as a chickadee. So you, some may be surprised to know that chickadees don't actually build a nest. They like to um, excavate their nest in a tree. So this spring, our family has made quite a few nesting boxes uh, and hoping to get some chickadees nesting on our property. We keep checking them frequently. And if we, if we get any activity, we'll be sure to post frequent updates. That's awesome. Um, so for our nest now, what we need to do is we need to create the center. So using your black, what you're going to do is we are going to scoop down and sort of like a little smile right in the center just to give it that little bit of depth and then it just comes sort of straight up along the top and we are going to paint that black and then what's important here is that we actually want to feather off the edges of this part so that it looks like it's falling into the nest. So as you can see, I've taken my paintbrush and I've sort of just feathered off the edges. Just like that. And this part can be super messy. It doesn't need to be even at all. 
as long as you've got that black center. Perfect. Oh, I'm excited to see what everyone's looks like. I'm going to share some fun facts about a bird who actually doesn't even bother to look at them. There is a bird that we have that visits our feeders here in Ottawa. It hangs out with all the blackbirds. It's called a cowbird, and I'm going to show you a photo on my on my book here. So this is a and this bird, they call them a brood parasite because these birds actually lay their eggs in other birds' nests. So they will pay attention to other active female birds. And when they see that that female bird is laying eggs, they will move into the nest when it's not being occupied. They might even kick the other bird's eggs out and lay their eggs in there. And you will have, you know, a very small bird, maybe, um, you know, as even a warbler raising cowbird young. And these fledglings, they hatch and they grow very fast and they will even kick the other birds out. Uh, so if you're looking for some, you know, interesting videos, um, search cowbirds on YouTube and you'll, you'll be shocked to see how big these little fledglings are and how they behave. That's awesome. awesome. I'm so excited for this. Um, okay, so our next step in our nest, and we are gonna add a little bit of highlight to our uh, tree branches as well. So for this particular part, um, my computer keeps doing that. There we go. We're going to put um, some either white or yellow. Um, so what I'm going to actually do is if you have both, it would be great if you did half and half. So a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow, it will create sort of that light, soft yellow. If you have just one or the other, that's totally fine too. And now what we need to do is we need to give the highlights around our nest as well as on our branches. So the highlights are very, very, very soft and you want to almost feather them out because we're creating that detail of sort of straw inside of our nest. So what we're going to do is take our brush and we're just going to feather in some light yellow in sort of very sporadic spots. So I've put it just at the bottom and I'm actually bringing it right off on the edge. Um, and then for the highlight at the top, you do want to make sure that it kind of comes out at the back. We're picturing the sun on top of this. So we have our highlight kind of right underneath here. And we are going to soften this afterwards with our brown. So if sometimes um, your brush stroke was a little bit thick or you're not happy with it, don't worry about that at all. Because we do do a couple of layers on this particular um, nest. And then we are going to carry it along our top. So we're going to bring our yellow just along sort of where the sun would catch it. And there we go. Perfect. Like that. And then on the branches itself, what we're going to do is we are going to, again, where the sunlight would hit our branch, we're going to put a little bit of this highlight just on top. So I've got some at the tops of my branches, just a little bit of a sort of a white yellow highlight, just to soften it up and give it some sort of dimension. There we go. There would not be any directly underneath your uh, nest, but we'll have maybe a little bit sort of just like that. Okay, Hi. so I put them at the bottom, a little bit at the top, and then just kissed up here on the top parts of our branches. Just I like see a, a question from Kristen, is wondering if um, if you buy nesting boxes or you build them, and um, you can do both. 
<laughs> um, so Wild Birds Unlimited will be will be selling um, nesting boxes. So the thing about nesting boxes, it's not one size fits all. Uh, nesting boxes are designed for many different species of birds. If you are handy and you're interested to do some woodworking and build some nesting boxes at this time, there's a fantastic website called nestwatch.org. I will share that in my comments as well, where you can go and find plans. You can specify the type of bird you're hoping to attract and have nest on your property. And it will give you all the designs and all the plans to build your own nesting box. Very That's cool. awesome. Lori was telling us that she saw a male common pintail all alone among a big group of mallards um, near uh, Billings Bridge in the Rita River. Is all that all right? right. <laughs> Um, I hope he was okay. Um, but is that normal for them to call well, a tab? I, um, I, I have to say I am not a, uh, a, a huge expert on waterfowl at this point. Uh, I'm still learning a lot through this business. Um, but what I can say that we are having a lot of sightings of, uh, of different waterfowl species and, and they're migrating. So sometimes what happens is, is you know, one species may, may join with another group. So perhaps this pintail joined with a, with a group of mallards and they're maybe traveling together. Um, and, and hopefully he'll find his mate for the season. Um, but uh, that would have been a beautiful sighting to see. They're, they're a stunning, stunning duck. Thanks for sharing that, Lori. Very exciting. Oh, this is neat. I'm liking, liking all the comments and the feedback. Yeah, there's viewers. some more questions there. We're going to get to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so for our next step in our nest, so we are kind of created our highlights. We do need to give our painting some shadows. So how we're going to do that is you are going to use a little bit of black and a little bit of brown. So almost like a half to half ratio. And what we're going to do is we are going to add a few shadows in and around our straw pieces on our nest. So again, we're giving this nest sort of that dimension and messy kind of appearance. Um, and we want to make sure that we've got these shadows um, mostly down near the bottom of the nest. So think of where the sun would hit and where it would kind of cause these additional shadows. Uh, we're going to make sure we pull it along a little bit inside the bottom part of our uh, inside of the nest. And right along our bottom and maybe a little bit throughout some of the straw pieces. So again, this is just giving it sort of the appearance that it's got some dimension flowing through it. We will, um, as I said, we do finish it off with another coat of brown. So don't worry if it's too thick in some areas because we are going to soften this up. On the branch itself, I do want you to carry a little bit of that darker shadow along the bottom part of our branch. So this again just makes it look like it's rounded and it has some shape to it. So almost opposite of where your highlights are, you'll bring in sort of that, that shadow. Looks yeah, Carol is doing such a good job. Now, for those that are going to add bird eggs inside their nest, and you can you can choose. I don't know if you want to share some different color options, Kindle. I'm going to do mine in sort of a blue color. Um, Kindle, what other options do we have for our eggs? Well, you know what I did was I printed off a really, really awesome image here. Yeah. And that shows us all the different colors of eggs of birds that we have right here. So we've got um, a song sparrow, a goldfinch, a wren. And you can see that, um, you know, we know the traditional robin's egg is blue. But if you look here, this is a starly. And look at how similar those eggs look. So you can see they're all different. So um, they have a lot of speckles on them. Uh, down here is our mallard duck egg. So I'm going to share this awesome photo on my Facebook page because it's just, it's a really, really beautiful image. And, and as it's nesting season, you may start to see eggshells on the ground because as our, as our babies are hatching, the parents are dropping the eggs out of the nest. So if you do come upon some egg, some eggshells, you'll be able to look at that and maybe you'll be able to identify 
what species of, of egg that was. That's awesome. Just as I um, as I'm doing this, I want to mention that make sure if you can, when you're painting in your eggs, that they are touching your black line, but you can still see it. So I'm going to hold this up to show you guys. You want to leave a little bit of a black, a darker border right underneath them, if possible. If not, no worries, but you don't want to come too much into your center because you do want to make it look like those eggs are lying inside of your nest. Um, if your brown paint was still a little bit wet, um, by all means, feel free to do two coats of paint on top of your uh, eggs. So our eggs, um, I chose to do three eggs in my nest. Um, you can do two like our sample. You can do four, uh, five. It's up to you. The, uh, Kendall, how many eggs can a... Um, can a bird lay? This every species sort of lays a different amount of eggs, and some some birds will actually lay there. So every time they lay a clutch of eggs, they call that a brood. So some birds might have multiple broods. So for instance, a robin um, will have up to two or three broods throughout the season, um, and and the number of eggs they lay kind of varies. So. Um, you know, as I mentioned, a hummingbird might lay one to two where, you know, your finch laid five. Um, a robin will typically lay, I think, around three to five eggs. So it, it kind of varies. And if you're ever wanting to learn a little bit more about how many eggs and, and a bit more of the nesting behavior of birds, a really great website, again, is allaboutbirds.org. Um, that's sort of my go to. I did see a really uh, great question from Marie. She asked if crows make nests and crows definitely make nests. They make quite large nests. A really cool fact about crows and ravens and blue jays is they're all in the Corvid family and they actually, they mate for life. So they have their one person and they stay together and they raise their young um, and, and build their nests together. So they're, they're quite a remarkable species. Yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. And Noreen is uh, letting us know that she has an Eastern Phoebe checking out all of their outdoor lights for a nesting site. The pair comes back every spring. Eastern Phoebes will often build their nests sort of along the side of your house. Um, they are a smaller bird, so um, smaller than a robin, bigger than a chickadee. And, um, and if you ever see a little bird that might sort of fit that description and it's perched on a tree and you see its tail bobby, a small bird with a bobbing tail, that's probably going to tell you, you have a, you're looking at an Eastern Phoebe. And that's right, they will come and, and lay their, their eggs close to your home. So it's always a treat to have a bird decide to make your house their home too. Um, so that's, that's a great, great thing to share. Thanks, Noreen. <laughs> okay, so now we are going to decorate um, our um, uh, leaves and our, our flowers, this is where you can get creative. You do not have to add a ton of blossoms. You can keep your leaves just green. You can be creative and add something super random. You, it's entirely up to you. For this particular um, uh, step though, I am gonna use my smaller paintbrush. So I've been painting with the larger one, but now I'm gonna use a smaller one just so I can get some of those smaller details. And same thing, when I dip it in my water, I always make sure that I roll and kind of pull it towards me as opposed to squishing it down this way. I don't want to damage those bristles. And then it gives it a really nice point that I can create with. So for my leaves, I am going to start with green and then I'm going to go in and add some yellow to give them some tone uh, difference to make them look shaped and um, dimensional. So per branch um i'm gonna put in maybe just at the top here we'll have three leaves and how i'm gonna do my leaves is i just do one curved side so sort of like a c with a backward c and i make sure it points up the top so i'm gonna have three leaves coming off of this branch and it's kind of fun, um, gives it sort of a whimsical feel. If you make sure they don't have to touch the actual brown, you can have some of them floating just like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do the same for this one. I'm going to add three. So I'll have one down here. And again, I'm not really touching the brown. 
and I'll have another one here and here. Now to frame off our uh, painting, I am gonna add some more down here, just so it doesn't look so uneven. I wanna make sure that I've got some action going on along the bottom. I'm not gonna put any green on these guys, only because I'm picturing them being nice and big, um, tall, or sorry, long branches. So there wouldn't be any greenery right there, but we are gonna put a few around the bottom, just so it looks like this is sitting, and I might put a couple over here as well. So we want to maybe add in that's okay. look like they're peeking up from another branch down below. And then this gives your painting a nice frame to it and sort of balances it out as well. And you can actually make some of them look like they're falling right off the canvas or the paper. There we go. I see a comment here from Linda who said that she saw and heard a very loud falcon yesterday in the large spruce tree behind her house. Um, and, and what's so interesting about that is their their call is so distinct that once you hear it, you you'll be able to identify it before you even see it. And I think that's what Linda said was she was able to really be able to hear it so well. So I'm gonna actually play the sound of of a falcon so we can uh, hear what that sounds like. So yeah, Merlin. So very distinct sound. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thanks for sharing that. There's certainly um, uh, not just songbirds in the trees. We have a we have a lot of falcons in the trees as well, and uh, and they they're also going to be net. They're also nesting. They they have probably started now. Very cool. Um, for our blossoms, what we're going to do is we are going to add on, I'm going to do some cherry blossoms. So sort of similar like we did at our last event with the cherry blossoms. I'm going to add in a few blossoms. And for this technique, they're just sort of done with a bunch of little tiny circles. And you, I'm using pink and white because I do want it to have a little bit of a vary in color so it looks like it's got some um, depth to it. So I'm kind of doing a sort of a pink little ball and then I'm gonna go in afterwards and add my, um, add my white to give it that depth to it. So I've got my pink and now I'm kind of going in with a little bit of white and then this will give it that sort of, there we go. <laughs> I have a little artist here who thinks she's just doing a horrible job. No. Oh my <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put probably a couple of other cherry blossoms in and around my edge just to frame it again. So continuing with sort of that um, perspective that there, this is a nest in a tree full of little blossoms, I'm adding a bunch of little tiny uh, blossoms in and around the bottom and a little bit down the side just to keep it consistent and to frame it. It always looks really nice when you have these, uh, these cherry blossoms sort of surrounding your, your image. And then I'm just going back over it with white again to kind of give it that, that look. Now these flowers are not perfectly shaped and that's sort of the idea. We don't want too much focus on our flowers. We wanna really pull up the um, focus on that bird, a uh, bird's nest, sorry. There we go. So there, so I've sort of framed it off. I think I might need another one over here. And then you can kind of figure out too uh, whereabouts you want your blossoms. Um, 
And then for our final step, uh, we have a couple steps left. We do need to go in and we need to soften out our shadows on our nest. So with brown, you're going to go onto the nest and we're just stroking in some sort of soft feathers coming right off the side. And what this is going to do is it's going to balance out all of your highlights and your shadows. So I'm really focusing on bringing sort of the texture right off the edge so that it does look like there is some sort of uh, straw and, um, you know, that sort of branch look. So I've really kind of made the sides very messy. And I'm going to do the same when I pull it down off the top. So we want to pull some of those branches right off and smoothen out our uh, highlights and our shadows. So you're doing really quick wisps with your brush and just going right over that. So then you can see. Now it looks like it's got a little bit more texture to it. I wanted to share another mask that is a extremely unique and very beautiful. This is a bird called the Baltimore, uh, <laughs> tongue twister, <laughs> Baltimore Oriole. And this is a species of bird that's also migrating back and they like to eat fruit and nectar. And we have special feeders designed just, just to attract Orioles. They especially love oranges. So um, even at this time, if you've got a feeding station set up, you can place some orange halves outside and it will help to attract them to your feeder station. But these birds, and I'm gonna show you a picture here, create a stunning nest where they weave their nest. Um, the, the female will actually weave this nest and she could spend up to a whole week uh, working on this um, as much as 40 hours, 10,000 stitches. So it is truly a masterpiece that this nest is hanging, hanging in the tree and you can often see them in the fall. They're very high up in the trees but you will see them in the fall when the leaves come off, off the trees and you'll be able to see these beautiful nests. So I just wanted to share that one with you because not all nests look the same. Yeah, I've never seen a hanging nest. I yeah. wonder if some of our uh, viewers have seen a hanging nest before. We'll have, to, we'll have to see. Let us know if you have, because I've never seen one, but I'm definitely going to be watching for them now. Look That's really high cool. up in the trees. Very cool. Um, I'm just going in here and adding in some some little um, areas that I thought was missing. Um, on ours, so we have two steps left. We do need to highlight our leaves. And then what we're going to do is we are going to add in um, some of our kind of uh, whimsical detail. And then we are finished. So for the highlights on the leaves, it's just a little bit of green and a little bit of yellow. If you don't have yellow, white is fine. And all you're going to do is you're just softening up a little bit of the inside of your leaf just so that it gives it that highlight. So we don't want it to be a solid green. We want it to have a little highlight on it. So again, it's with that little bit of yellow and you're just going in and blending on a little bit on each leaf. When you are done with that, we're going to add some kind of wisps in and around our cherry blossoms. And this is, and our highlights, and this is our final step for our um, painting today. And then you guys will stick on, you guys can uh, ask some questions and we can finish up together. But what this is gonna look like is using the end of our paintbrush, so not the bristles, you're going to dip it into white. And all you're gonna do is add some dip dots in and around where your cherry blossoms are. Just like that. So you can just stamp on these. Again, this is just sort of kind of giving it that sort of like, I don't know, little sparkle, a little bit of, you know, pollen and things like that. So we're just putting it in and around the cherry blossom areas. Not too many dip dots, just a few. 
And then this just gives it a bit more character too. It's always fun. I like doing the dip dots myself. And it'll tie it all in together. And then we need to have the tops of our bird eggs highlighted. So using white, all you're gonna do is do a little bit of a highlight at the top one end of your, your bird eggs, just like that. And then we are all finished our painting. Lovely. I have a question from Janet. She's mentioned that the girls want to make bird feeders at home. Do I have any ideas? So we, well, we've all been home for some time and we have certainly been making some homemade bird feeders in our house. Um, one suggestion I have is if you take half of a, take a bagel, cut it in half, you can spread peanut butter or any type of nut butter and then dip that in bird seed and hang that from a, a branch. That one's been popular. You can also add like a, a skewer, like a shish kebab stick through that to add a little bit of a perch. And we've been able to attract goldfinches, chickadees, nuthatches. We even had a hairy woodpecker eating off that feeder that we made. Um, so that's a really great and easy one to do. There's also lots of ideas out there. So if you have recycled containers, maybe, um, maybe a um, juice jug or a milk carton, there's lots of ideas where you can turn that into, uh, into a bird feeder. An egg carton. Oh yeah, Marlo had a great suggestion where you can take an egg carton and take the top off so you have all the little cups and then just add string to the sides and hang that on a tree and fill it with seed. So there's tons of great ideas to try and attract some birds to your yard. Very great cool. Question. My daughters, uh, we made, we used toilet paper rolls. And yeah. just wrap that in, um, I know in the winter time you can use shortening. Um, not in the summer or in this hot weather because it'll melt, but the uh, shortening is fantastic in the winter because it hardens to that seed and then they can really pick it off. So we use toilet paper um, with peanut butter and roll it up and then just put a piece of twine through it too. Lots of creative options. There are, there's lots out there. We have been sharing lots on our Facebook page. Mm. Um, I will mention that uh, we will very soon have uh, bird seed. So if ever, if ever, if anyone out there is getting low on bird seed, I know it's a hard product to find these days. Uh, we will very soon be offering delivery. So please, if you're if you're in the need for bird seed, follow our page. We'll be posting updates as I mentioned earlier, um, and letting you know when we can start getting products out to you. Because this has been a, a great opportunity while we're home to enjoy the birds that are visiting our yard. And Kendall, when, um, when this is all finished, can you tell us a little bit about your store that's opening up? Yeah, so Wild Birds Unlimited is going to be opening up in Canada. Um, some of you may already know Wild Birds Unlimited because we do have another location already here in Ottawa on Bay Street. Um, and uh, they've been here for 30 years. So it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic company. And I have been a nurse for 15 years and decided that it was time to explore another opportunity that brings just as much joy to me as, as being a nurse has been. So I have always had a passion for birds. So our store will be a nature hobby store. We will carry a great selection of bird feeders, of bird food products, everything you need to create a little refuge in your own yard to welcome the birds that, that we see so frequently here. Once we can open our doors and we're still uh, waiting to see when that time will be, we will host a lot of in-store events. So we'll have, um, you know, information sessions and all sorts of great things. So it's going to be a great little hub. We cannot wait to open. Uh, Ali, thank you again for inviting us to, to join today. And, and our girls have enjoyed the painting, but also to, to you know, share, share what we have to, to offer the community. Thank well, you. we're really happy you guys were able to paint with us. Um, and thanks uh, again to uh, Paige and Marlo as well for helping. <laughs> um, again, Pop-Up Painters loves, loves, loves uh, supporting small businesses. So definitely make sure you guys go and check out uh, Kindle and her family's Wild Birds Unlimited uh, in Canada and their Facebook page. We will have all the links and all the fun stuff in these posts. Um, also, uh, be sure to like our pages, um, give us reviews. We enjoy doing this kind of stuff for you, especially during this uh, time in isolation. It gives everybody a little bit of um, mindful art time. You get to escape and uh, uh, 
uh, from whatever it is that we're doing right now and just, you know, embracing some creativity, which is always good for the soul. Um, I'm so happy that Kindle, you came on and uh, joined us for some education. I know I learned so much and I'm so excited to make bird feeders this afternoon with the girls um, and check out, uh, you know, the local wildlife as well. So um, thanks so much, everyone, for hopping on and painting with us. Um, as always, we will, um, I'll share a picture of our finished product and share your pictures uh, with us. Uh, tag the companies. Um, if you like what we're doing, give us reviews um, and all that kind of stuff because it's really appreciated, especially during a time like now where we can't, you know, have that sort of in-face uh, contact with our customers that we hope for. So um, again, thanks for hopping on and uh, we look forward to creating with you guys another time. Yeah, thanks everyone. It was so have much great, fun. So much fun. <laughs> have a great day, you guys. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.